hey, it's Darius. And congratulations to I-75ers who let me know that they passed the CPA exam this month and also last month. So congratulations to them. Now, what about you? Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll save a spot on this list for you next month. The exam is also going to expect you to know something about an M3 reconciliation. M3 is like the M1 reconciliation, but M3 is required for corporations with total assets of 10 million or more. And you got to remember that it's 10 million or more in total assets, not in total revenue or total profit. So the M3 requirement exists because larger corporations, those with assets of 10 million or more, often have more complex financial structure and significant differences between book income and taxable income. So Schedule M3 provides the IRS with a more detailed breakdown of these differences, including permanent and temporary adjustments to ensure transparency and compliance in tax reporting. So with M1, it was enough to say that this was a difference between book income and taxable income. But for M3, you've got to tell the IRS if this is a temporary difference or a permanent difference. And the $10 million threshold of assets helps the IRS focus on larger corporations where reconciling book and taxable income is more essential for accurate tax assessment. So here we go, which type of corporations are required to file Schedule M3? A says corporations with assets of a million dollars or more, B corporations with assets of 10 million or more, C corporations with assets of 500,000 or more, D corporations with net income over a million dollars. And the answer is B. Schedule M3 is required for corporations with total assets of 10 million or more. This requirement exists because larger corps often have more complex financial structure and significant differences between book income and taxable income. Schedule M3 provides the IRS with a detailed breakdown of these differences, including permanent and temporary differences. And the question asks which type of corps are required to file Schedule M3? And the answer is corporations with assets of 10 million or more. All right, for Schedule M3, understanding temporary and permanent differences is essential because they affect how book income reconciles with taxable income. We know that from our M1. Temporary differences are timing differences between book and taxable income. And these differences arise, why? Because certain income or expenses are recognized in different periods for financial and tax reporting, but will eventually align over time. Let's look at some examples of expenses. Depreciation. Well, tax depreciation we know is higher than book depreciation in the first year of an asset's life, leading to higher book income than taxable income in the year of the asset acquisition. And that'll be a temporary difference because it will reverse. So any differences with depreciation will always be temporary. Warranty costs are also temporary differences because warranty costs are estimated for gap purposes on the income statement, but deducted only when paid for tax purposes. So that's a temporary difference because that's expected to reverse. You get to expense it by estimating and you only can deduct it when paid. So the treatment of warranty costs will be different on the tax return and on the financial statements, but eventually you'll get to deduct and expense. It's just a timing issue. Same with bad debt expense or credit loss expense. It's estimated and expensed for gap purposes, but for tax purposes, bad debt expense or credit loss expense, only deductible when specific accounts are written off because a customer declared bankruptcy. So that's a temporary difference or timing difference also. So depreciation, warranty costs, bad debt expense, these are all temporary differences. Same with accrued wages. Accrued expenses like wages, well, they're expensed on the books when incurred, but not deductible for tax purposes until the wages are paid. And that creates a timing difference that eventually reverses. So since these differences between book and taxable income are expected to reverse over time, these are all temporary, not permanent differences. And if you notice, they all have to do with expensing and tax deduction, nothing to do with income. We're gonna to get to income on the next slide, but all of these differences have to do with when can I expense it on the financial statements and when can I deduct it on the tax return? And all of these differences are temporary. Why? Because they're expected to reverse. Here's some more temporary differences, but with respect to income. 
Rent received in advance by the landlord is taxable in the year collected, but not considered income on the books until the lease begins. And eventually the lease will begin and you'll recognize that income on the financial statements. So you might have the rent be collected in one period, especially at the end of a year, and then early in the next year, it'll be earned. So we'll show it on next year's income statement. So that's an example of income and a temporary difference. Same with accrued interest. Income on the books, we've earned it, but taxable next year when collected. Temporary difference, yes, because it'll eventually be taxable and show up on the books as earned income. And then there's unrealized gains on investments. These are recognized in book income, but they're deferred for tax purposes until the securities are sold. So this also creates a temporary difference. So if our stock investments have gone up, the financial statements are going to reflect that. The unrealized gains will show up as income on the books, but this is going to be delayed, deferred for tax purposes until the securities are actually sold. And eventually if it's sold at a gain, there will be a taxable situation. So it is expected to reverse. These are all temporary differences with regard to income. Now for the permanent differences. So permanent differences are items that appear in either book or taxable income, but never both. These items do not reverse over time and permanently affect the difference between book and taxable income. We got tax exempt interest as a very popular example. Income from municipal bonds we know is recognized as income for book purposes, but is excluded from taxable income. It does not reverse. There'll never be a year where that income is taxable, but not included on the books. Dividend income that qualifies for the dividends received deduction. That's another example of a permanent difference because a portion of the dividend income is excluded from taxable income, but there's no dividend received deduction for book purposes. So this difference created by the dividends received deduction or created by tax exempt interest, these are permanent differences and permanent differences appear on the M3 reconciliation along with temporary differences. They both appear on the M3 reconciliation. Okay, so those are some income items. What about expenses? Well, non-deductible expenses like fines and penalties and entertainment expenses, these are deductions for book income. So you get to expense this to arrive at net income on the financial statements, but it's not allowed as a deduction for tax purposes and it does not reverse. You'll never have a year where fines and penalties will give you a tax deduction, but not a book expense. Same with entertainment, no tax deduction, but it is allowed as a book expense and it results in a permanent difference. Another one that they like is life insurance premiums where the company is the beneficiary. We know that those premiums are expensed on the financial statements, but it's never tax deductible if the company's the beneficiary. And that's because life insurance proceeds on key employees, if the employees die, the proceeds are reported as income for financial purposes, but they're excluded from taxable income. And that does not reverse because life insurance proceeds are not taxable. And that's why the company gets no deduction if they are the beneficiary of the policy. All right, which of the following is an example of a permanent difference for Schedule M3 purposes? A, depreciation expense, B, municipal bond interest, C, warranty expense, or D, credit loss expense? And the answer is B, municipal bond interest. It's a permanent difference because it's included in book income, but it's never taxable. Unlike temporary differences, permanent differences do not reverse over time. There'll never be a year where that municipal bond interest that was already recorded in the books one year is taxable in a later year. No, never happened. Therefore, municipal bond interest shows as a permanent difference on Schedule M3. A is wrong, depreciation expense, because in the first year of an asset's life, depreciation deduction on the tax return is greater than the expense recorded for depreciation on the books. Depreciation expense is a temporary difference because next year there might be a greater expense for depreciation on the books compared to the deduction for depreciation on the tax return. If the difference doesn't reverse next year, it'll reverse the year after, but it will reverse, making depreciation a temporary difference. And then C is wrong, warranty costs are deductible when paid but estimated for expense purposes on the financial statements. So the differences do eventually reverse. Therefore, the difference for warranty costs are temporary, not permanent. And D is wrong, credit losses like bad debt expense. That's deductible when a customer declares bankruptcy, but no deduction until then. 
But credit loss expense on the income statement is estimated, much like warranty expense. Therefore, credit loss expense is considered a temporary difference since it's expected to reverse. And the question asked which of the following is an example of permanent difference for Schedule M3 purposes, and the answer would be municipal bond interest. How about this? A corporation incurs expenses for client entertainment that are non-deductible for tax purposes. How should this be reported on Schedule M3? A is a temporary difference. B is a permanent difference. C, it does not need to be reported on Schedule M3. D, as an item that is treated the same way for book purposes as for tax purposes. And the answer is B, non-deductible client entertainment expense are considered a permanent difference because they're included in book income, they're expensed, but they're not deductible for tax purposes anymore. Entertainment is not deductible. So this creates a permanent discrepancy between book and taxable income because these entertainment expenses will never be allowed for the tax return, no tax deduction for entertainment. Unlike temporary differences that eventually reverse, this entertainment deduction will never be taken unless the tax law changes again, because right now you can't deduct entertainment. A is wrong as a temporary difference? No. Temporary differences represent timing differences that will eventually reverse over time, such as for depreciation or accrued expenses, such as warranty costs, credit loss expense. Since non-deductible entertainment expenses are permanently disallowed for tax purposes, they're not considered temporary differences. And C is wrong. It says it does not need to be reported on Schedule M3. No, all significant book tax differences, temporary and permanent, must be reported on Schedule M3. So non-deductible expenses, including entertainment costs, are important to report to reconcile book income with taxable income accurately. And D is wrong. D says as an item that is treated the same way for book purposes as for tax purposes, no, non-deductible entertainment expenses are treated differently for book and tax. For book purposes, they will be recorded as an expense. But for tax purposes, they're permanently disallowed, creating a discrepancy that must be reported at Schedule M3 as a permanent difference. And the question asked, a corporation incurs expenses for client entertainment that are non-deductible for tax purposes. How should this be reported on Schedule M3? And the answer is B, as a permanent difference. How about this? Which of the following would result in a temporary difference that could affect Schedule M3? So we're looking for a temporary difference now. A, life insurance proceeds received. B, bad debt expense estimated under the gap allowance method. C, tax exempt municipal bond income or D, all of these? And the answer is B, bad debt expense estimated under the gap allowance method. That's a temporary difference. For financial reporting, bad debt expense may be estimated based on anticipated losses. But for tax purposes, it's typically only deductible when specific debts are written off, like when a customer declares bankruptcy. And this timing difference creates a temporary discrepancy between book and taxable income and it will eventually reverse, which is why it's a temporary difference. This difference is expected to reverse because you are allowed to expense bad debts and you are allowed to deduct them on the tax return. It's just that the rules for when you can do it are different, which makes bad debts and credit loss expense temporary. A is wrong, life insurance proceeds received. That's a permanent difference because those life insurance proceeds are typically included in book income, but they're excluded from taxable income creating a difference that will not reverse over time. It's not expected to reverse. There won't be a year where the life insurance proceeds will be taxable. Since it's not expected to reverse, it's a permanent difference. And C is wrong. Tax exempt municipal bond income is a permanent difference. It's included in book income, but excluded from taxable income, resulting in a permanent difference. It's non-reversible. There'll never be a year where this municipal bond income is taxable. So it's not expected to reverse making it a permanent difference. And the question asked, which of the following would result in a temporary difference that could affect Schedule M3? And the only one here is letter B, bad debt expense or credit loss expense estimated under the gap allowance method. How about this? Which type of difference would result from using different depreciation methods for tax and book purposes? Is it A, permanent difference, B, temporary difference, C, non-deductible difference, or D, tax exempt difference? And the answer is B, it's a temporary difference. Using different depreciation methods for tax and book purposes is very normal, and it creates a temporary difference. Because for financial reporting, a corporation may use one depreciation method such as straight line. While for tax purposes, you never use straight line. You use accelerated. And this results in a timing difference where the depreciation expense differs between book and tax calculations in the short term. 
but eventually they align over the asset's life. So this temporary discrepancy is expected to reverse as the asset is fully depreciated over its useful life. And the question asked which type of difference would result from using different depreciation methods for tax and book purposes, and the answer is B, a temporary difference. How about this? Which of the following creates a permanent difference on Schedule M3? A, penalty payments made during the year. B, interest accrued but not received by year end. C, advanced rental income received but not earned. D, all of these. We're looking for a permanent difference. And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the community or comments section. And if you found this video on M3 helpful and you want to see the end of it and more videos like it, go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on the right road to passing reg. I'll leave a link in the description. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. Hey, it's Darius, and congratulations to I-75ers who let me know that they passed the CPA exam this month, and also last month. So congratulations to them. Now, what about you? Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. I'll save a spot on this list for you next month.